Hey guys, Vincent back with another video for Tails Coffee and today it's part two to my cold bloom video. So if you guys haven't seen it yet, there will be a link up here or in the description box below. So make sure to watch that first. But as you guys know, I'm a guy who loves a single pour technique and with the cold bloom video, cold water does not allow you to have a single pour. So in today's video, I will be showing you guys how I've evolved this cold water technique into having a single pour with it. Let's get right into it. So before we get into the video, my name is Vincent. I'm the head roaster for Tails Coffee and our goal is to create and bring new ideas and concepts to the coffee world. So if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you can get the quickest updates on our newest uploads. And if you wanna check out my favorite coffees and my equipment, go to tailscoffee.com. So a quick recap to last week's video. Now, we use cold water to start off blooming the grinds. Now, the, the idea behind the cold water was to actually just protect the beans from scalding when we put like a 98, 99 degree water on top of it. Now for us to incorporate the single pour technique into it, I thought instead of using a cold water to start, why don't I just add an ice cube in there? And the ice would just melt as I pour directly on there and it would act just like cold water starts. So now we have a hot water on ice that, create, that lets us protect the beans and do the single pour. So the reason why I wanted to actually incorporate the single pour technique was because I noticed that there were a few issues I had with just the cold bloom start. Now, by pouring with a cold bloom, of course, there's gonna be a, ne a need for two kettles, or you use a beaker like me, and when I poured from the beaker, it just was sinking really quickly, so we're not having like the best extraction in the beginning, and it's just really thin stuff. That's why it came out as like a, a lot lighter than I would have normally liked. Now, with the single pour technique, I can actually revert back to a finer grind, which prevents us from having these under extracted sides that you could see in the last video. So there's a lot of grinds that were just like floating on the side or at the top, and they just didn't want to sink at the end of it, which meant to me that there was going to be a lot of under extracted flavors. And it was just a really sweet, but there was more that could have come out of it. So with this ice cube, we can now have a stronger cup of coffee that's brewed thoroughly from beginning to end. So let's get right into the recipe that I'll be showing everybody. So once again, we're gonna be using 20 grams of beans, 300 grams of water, but we're back to the single pour grind size. So it's gonna be on a medium fine side. The water temperature we're gonna be using is 98 degrees. I've got my ice cubes in a freezer. The freezer is set at minus 17 to minus 19 degrees. Not, I don't think it really matters that much, but it's gonna be about 11 grams to about 15 grams of water. Like, don't sweat the details. It's not ultra, ultra important. What's more important is having the ice cube in there and just pouring on there to let it melt. So let's get right into the demo and I'll show you guys how I do this ice water technique. Hey guys, Eric back to convince you guys to give me your money, all right? Today I'm gonna to be talking about our single pour coffee. There's actually something in common between me and single pour coffee. I'm single and poor, all right? So I'm really hoping to change one of those things, all right? I'm hoping to be rich, so go visit tailscoffee.com and purchase some coffee and you can use code Candice for 15% off, but you don't have to use it. And if you're looking to change my relationship status, just slide in my DMs. Visit tailscoffee.com. Hey guys, so we're on this side. I've already preset the grinds. I've got the preheated filters. Uh, my water is already at 98 degrees. So we've got 20 grams of beans in here. We're gonna do 300 grams of total water. Now, as you guys can see, I've got the ice cubes over here. They're not the best looking ice cubes, but Whatever will work, okay? So we're gonna just choose like a piece, like let's look at this ugly piece. Like, oh, where's, there it is, there, there's my camera. So let's just take this piece, it's, it's whatever. We're gonna put it in here, and it reads at 13 grams. Jackie, you wanna put that away from me? So, we've got 13 grams, so we're aiming for 300 grams of water total. So, let's get started. We're gonna start the timer and make sure to notice how much more is gonna get absorbed. We're gonna start with the hot water 
And as you guys can see, it's already just starting to float right up there. We know this is just a cold water start because not a lot of gases are starting up. 14 seconds for first drip. And now this is when we start the pulse pours, or well, not pulse pour, but lifting up and down to create as much agitation as possible. So I actually think that because we start with cold water, we're going to get less extraction because of how the water is protecting the beans. So we're gonna actually aim for a longer and slower pour. See how there's a lot of stuff still floating up. We're already at 200 grams of water. So we're gonna slowly start working our way out and pressing all the grinds down to make sure every little bit is saturated. And that's 300. Look at how much effort it took to actually just get that kind of same level of drawdown as I normally do. And that's because the cold water start really does protect the beans from extraction. So as you guys can see, we're nearing the end. And if you guys wanna take a look, it's, it's been about two minutes and 30 seconds. We have ourselves our full drain. Now take a look at this. Take a look at the shape. Notice how on the sides, unlike last week, there's actually not a lot of like bigger chunks on the sides. And this actually helps me understand the brew process a little bit more. Um, last week, because we use larger grinds, things flow, they take a lot longer to sink. But this week, because of the ice, ice cube, we can use finer grinds, not a lot, nice sides, pasty, but not super over extracted. So let's get onto the other side, talk about the coffee, and discuss what it tastes like. Welcome back to the side of the counter, guys. So we have ourselves our ice cube brewed coffee. Now, right off the bat, I'd like to say that compared to last week, yes, we did use the same beans, and last, compared to last week, we have a much richer color. Last week, you could just noticeably see that it was a lot thinner and a lot more clear, and there was definitely a lot more under extraction. Now, whether or not that was due to the larger grind size or the cold water, I would attribute it to both of them. And so if I poured it a little bit even slower last week, I might have been able to reach a higher kind of extraction levels. Now back to this one though, because we use the ice cube, we're now able to use the single pour and the medium fine grinds that I ever so love. And so we have ourselves a much richer color and uh, let's get right into the tasting. So these are the origami mugs that are the tasters. They give them off more aroma and uh, taste a little bit better. So we don't actually sell them, not yet. I've been thinking about it, but the normal cups are great enough already. Wow. So right away, you're gonna notice that there's a lot more complexity and there's still none of that bitterness, but there's a lot of that sweetness that you can actually get. Now, remember, I actually brewed with 98 degree water. Normally when you brew like even medium co like roasted coffees, when you use a higher water temperature, you're naturally gonna get a kind of scaldy, kind of like darker flavor. And in this coffee, there's none of that. A lot of roundness and a lot of sweetness and it just coats my tongue really nicely and it just leaves this really gentle, gentle feeling afterwards. So I really actually think that the ice cube makes the difference. It's because we can still have this kind of cold bloom effect or cold water bloom effect, sorry, while retaining the single pour technique. And it allows us to have a much richer and heavier extraction and stronger extraction that gives us that full body sweetness and complexity that we're looking for, but without any of the darker flavors. And it is exceptionally noticeable, especially when you use darker or roasted, like more roasted beans. And so for those of you that have actually been able to try it out with the mediums or the darker roasted coffees, please try it out with the ice cube. It is so interesting how this actually changes the flavors and it can actually change how well you brew and how good your coffee can taste. It just becomes a lot sweeter and complex. All the flavors are there. That's what the 98 degree water is for. So I just wanted to thank everybody that actually tried out the cold water bloom technique last week. 
I saw a lot of different messages and different ideas and some of you guys had success. Some of you guys were kind of like, eh, I didn't really like it that much. But let me know what you guys think in the comments on how this ice cube technique worked because I actually think it is the superior version of the two. It is the improved version. It is so much better tasting. So let me know how this works. Let me know if this is a game changer for you. And uh, catch you guys in the next one. Bye.